Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's so great to see you. Welcome to those of you who are joining us online today. Our service continues with the acclamation in the middle of page three in your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd, who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called the Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Please join me in <clears throat> uh, saying together Canticle 16. Mm -hmm. 
found on page 5 in our bulletin. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. The people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. 
There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who, who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Gracious God, take our minds and think through them. Take our hands and work through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Please be seated. Today we continue the motif found in last week's scripture passages of endings and beginnings. We end one liturgical year today, even as we prepare to begin again with the start of Advent next Sunday. We end by reading today from Luke's Gospel of the story of Jesus' crucifixion, even as we look ahead to our Advent journey of preparation to celebrate Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. And today we celebrate the feast of Christ the King, also known as the Reign of Christ. So a bit of background on this holy day. It is a relative newcomer to our liturgical calendar. It was first instituted by Pope Pius XI in 1925 under the auspicious title, The Solemnity of Our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. And it was a response to the growing nationalism and secularism after the First World War. In 1970, it was moved to the last Sunday in ordinary time, so the last Sunday of the church year, and it was adopted by Anglicans and Lutherans and other Protestants, along with this revised common lectionary that we all share for our cycle of Sunday scripture readings. Christ as king, then, is one of the many ways that we can know something about God might not be the first thing we think of. Often we think of the good shepherd, right? What are some other things that you think of when you think of Jesus? Other titles or images? Teacher? Teacher? Prince of Peace? Counselor? Counselor? Healer? Healer. Yeah. Leader. Leader, absolutely. King might not be the first thing we go to, and yet there is something about this that tells us something about who Jesus was. And while we don't have the experience of living under the rule of a monarchy, we know enough about kingship in itself to understand the dominion and authority that such a title holds. We know from history that kingship can mean unassailable power or might makes right that its leadership is passed down through families unless someone else wins it in battle, and that there is a long history of using divine right or being chosen by God to establish and maintain rule. And this is not just an invention of the Middle Ages, if that's what all of this brings to mind. We see it clearly in our own faith stories, from the anointing of David by Samuel to the eventual and the eventual power plays within David's family for who would succeed him on the throne, to the way in which Matthew explicitly tied the birth of Jesus to this line of David and his kingship, from how Luke built up the divine plan for Jesus by interweaving the story of 
Elizabeth and Zechariah's miraculous baby, John the Baptist, to Zechariah's prophecy, the song of Zechariah, the canticle we just read together, to the visit of Mary by the angel Gabriel, and then that beautiful story of the Spirit moving between Mary and Elizabeth when they meet. But today, today we begin at the end, not at that beginning. We begin today by standing at the foot of the cross, at Golgotha, not probably the place you would expect when celebrating Christ as king. But in our gospel reading from Luke, we are offered a juxtaposition between two types of kingship, the reign of Caesar and the kingship of Jesus. The reign of Caesar is visible in the crucifixion itself, a common Roman method of execution meant to humiliate the condemned, to intimidate the populace, and to project imperial power. And so we see Jesus on the cross, a sarcastic sign hanging over his head, proclaiming him a king. And he has been forsaken by his friends and is mocked by the leaders and the soldiers and even those criminals hanging alongside him. In this single sketch, we witness the imperial kingship of Caesar, the rule of domination and cruelty and terror and contempt. Yet in this same scene, we encounter a different kind of kingship. Here in his final moments, as death approached, Jesus' response to those who crucified him was to pray, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus' response to those who mocked him was to extend the promise of salvation and paradise. Jesus' last words to another human being before his death and resurrection were words of forgiveness. Christ's kingship, then, as seen throughout his life, in his teaching, through his miracles, and now here on the cross, is the perfect reversal of Caesar's. Instead of domination, servanthood. Instead of mockery, kindness. Instead of cruelty, mercy. The promise of Christ the King is that the powers of this world that bully and oppress, and exploit, do not get the final word. The cross is not the final word. The promise of the reign of Christ is that the way of God's love will prevail. That Easter morning will always come. And every time we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, we are proclaiming our trust in God's love and mercy, and that endings are never the end, only a doorway to new beginnings. And so as we stand today in this doorway between one church year ending and another beginning shortly, my prayer is that we will prepare our hearts and our lives for the coming of Christ and of Christ's reign, that as members of the body of Christ in this world, we will choose to enact Christ's reign of love and mercy, even as we prepare to welcome again the babe who will be born to show us the way. Amen. You are invited to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the church universal, its ministry, and the mission of the gospel, may we be faithful to God's word. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. For the well-being of creation, for those who work in the fields, for seasonable weather, and for the equitable sharing of the fruits of the earth, Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. For peace and justice in the world, and for those in authority, may we all work for the common good. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. For the poor, oppressed, sick, bereaved, and lonely, let us be beacons of God's love and compassion to bring them comfort. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, great. is great. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, may they know God's presence in their distress. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. For those in need of comfort or healing, Art, Mary, Mark, Tess, Sally, Mary, Carolyn, Bill, Kim, Kim Kells, Paul, Catherine, Debbie, Cam, John, Cindy, and Denise. Are there others? For those preparing for marriage soon, for those expecting babies soon, Janelle and Jordan and Savannah, are there others? May and Brandon. For those serving in the military and their families, especially Will, McKenna, and Brennan, are there others? For all victims of gun violence and hate crimes, and for those traveling this week. In thanksgiving for our lives together in the Lord. For those who grieve, the Newton family, are there others? And for those who have died, Dave Newton. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. May the peace of Christ be always with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, friends. You may be seated. It's really great to see you all here, especially on such a cold and blustery day. Um, the wind is still kicking up. I'm sure you can hear it, but I have to tell you, at 8.30, it felt like we were on a boat. <laughs> it, we were rocking and rolling on this hill. So um, just a few notes on our life together. First, youth group scheduled originally for tonight is going to be rescheduled. A couple of our youth group leaders are under the weather. So pray for their um, recovery, and we'll be sending out an email with a rescheduled date soon. Also, just a shout-out to Troop 829, our um, scout troop. They participated yesterday in the um, preparation for the Antietam Illumination, which happens every year at Antietam Battlefield, if you know about that. Um, they light um, and have an installation of candles for every one of the over 23,000 soldiers who were killed in that battle um, the first weekend in uh, December, I believe. And so our troop was there all day yesterday. They stayed through the end longer than any of the other troops and got a really wonderful email last night from the National Park Service commending them for their um, volunteering. So we're so proud of them. I hope you can stay after church today. We're going to be gathering right here for a little slideshow and show and tell, and I've got some treats. I've got my favorite candy that um, I found when we were in Israel, and I've got some hummus with um, some olive oil brought back from Palestine and some za'atar, and there's a Middle Eastern market out in um, Urbana, so I picked up some baklava, fresh baklava. And so stay, and we're going to have fun after the service. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. And so join us at 9.30. We'll be gathering downstairs to make Advent wreaths that you can take home for your celebration and um, season worship at home. And also I will have devotional materials that you can pick up. And then also in Advent, you will see that starting on the 4th for three Sundays at 9.30 for adults while the kids are in Sunday school, we will have an, ad, an Advent exploration of Benedictine spirituality. It is that time of year where the angel tree has made its appearance, so I hope that you will consider grabbing some angels. This year we are, have um, gifts, requests for uh, adults out at Pleasant View Nursing Home, some families through Mount Airy Net, and some children who are in foster care in Carroll County. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of words. So, check out the angel tree. And there's also raffle tickets. This is a leftover from our basket raffle back in the fall, but you can buy raffle tickets to win a $100 gift card to Trouts. Sounds good to me. Last thing I wanna say is coming up on December 3rd, Saturday, down at our thrift shop, we're gonna have our annual Santa's workshop. This is when we have special things set aside so that children can buy presents for their family or their friends or their teachers. We need some volunteers that day, so if you can give an hour or two, sometime between 11 and 3 p.m. on December 3rd, please talk to me or Deb Schaefer, I'm just volunteering you. I just voluntold you. <laughs> um, let her know and um, we'll get you further details. That's a lot, but it's a busy time of year, and there's some great stuff going on. Are there any Thanksgivings of the community we can celebrate with you today? Birthdays, anniversaries, or other exciting things? My great niece, Maya. Great niece, Maya. Yay! She's what? Awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> yes, of course you are. Of course you are. <laughs> Anyone else? 
well for Maya and the celebration in your family. Let us all pray our prayer at the bottom of page nine in your bulletin. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they mark this day. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love. Those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. invited to stand as we pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, 
your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for holy people. You may be seated. In a moment, the usher will invite you forward for communion. We have wheat wafers as well as gluten-free wafers. We also have wine. You are welcome to receive communion in both kinds or only in one if that is your preference. If you would like to come forward to receive a blessing, you can do so by indicating with your arms crossed over your chest. And if you would just like to pray a prayer for spiritual communion today, you will find that on the next page in your bulletin.
you are invited to stand as we pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ the Good Shepherd enfold us with love, fill us with peace, and lead us in hope this day and all our days. In the name of the Holy One and Undivided Trinity. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and your neighbor. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.